everyone, thanks for joining. Uh, the purpose of this video is to show you what goes on in creating content uh, for YouTube or other media. So I'm setting up uh, my camera, setting up lights, and I'm going to take off the print that I created on the Prusa. I created a second one. This is for the Decora uh, speaker plate. And uh, you'll see what goes on. So part of what I need to do, because I have interference with audio and my router, is I need to set up Adobe Audition to record voice from my uh, Yeti microphone. So I'm going to set that now, and I'm going to hit the record button, mic check, mic check, mic check. Okay, we're good there. So that's recording that audio here, so that way I can replace the audio on my camera when I start. Then I have my camera, this is the um, Lumix G85, and I got this awesome battery pack, it's an Anchor battery pack here, and this gives me probably three days of recording, and a 256 gigabyte card and that gives me several hours, like eight and a half hours of recording. So I'm going to set this camera up in front of my chair. Seems to be the best spot for now. Okay, so I got the camera set up and I'm just turning the screen so I can see it so now you can see my camera here that's where I'll be working And then I have lighting that I'm going to set up right now. I'm going to plug it in. So I should have made an immediate difference in the lighting. It's a indirect lighting because I have a curtain umbrella, I should say. So you can see that's the the umbrella. All right, so I'm gonna hit record. I should be recording now. Yep, that's recording. start talking now for the camera. Let's see if we get good audio. Appears to be okay. I'll push in a little bit. Alright, this is John, would you do it? Uh, thanks for watching this video. The uh, purpose of this video is to demonstrate how to create a Decora wall plate using Fusion 360. And in this video, I'm going to demonstrate using parameters in which you can set up variables that define specific values. For instance, I defined variables for the height of the wall plate, and I measured uh, from another decor of plate uh, to determine these values. I measured, uh, for instance, the screw holes. There were two screw holes, one for mounting the decor plate to the low voltage box, 
and another hole for accepting a screw to mount the cover plate which covers the decor. So I have um, some parts that I got from Monoprice a while ago. This is this is a part from Monoprice. And it was meant for setting up, I had two of these, for um, surround sound. Now, I mounted this, uh, I need speakers, two speakers, to go left and right of the TV I'm mounting in our uh, living room. So, I could use this, but then I'd require another hole because I, I would need to put another little voltage box. Instead, I wanted to combine two Decora plates in one uh, low voltage box. So I could have HDMI cable and one Decora plate and the audio cables in another plate. So my solution to that was I could purchase one. So it's like 20 bucks to get two plates that were Decora that had four connectors on each. This one has eight. Um, or I could design it, and I figured, why not? Let's let's design it, and it gives me more experience in Fusion 360, and I'm able to uh, print it out and show proof that 3D printing doesn't have to be used for printing toys. It can actually be used for practical printing. So over here, I'm going to adjust my camera now to show the part. Not so good right now. Alright, so this is the part that was printed. Uh, this is on the Prusa i3 MK2S. Um, I'm going to take this off of the bed now. It just takes a little bit of effort to, to get it off. Literal lateral force. I'm using a, um, a knife. A knife with smooth edges, so it doesn't matter. Like digging. Here's our. Oh, I need to zoom back out now. Okay, so this is our decor plate that was printed. All right, so everybody in the live stream can see this is the decor plate that I printed. I tweeted about this, so you can see this on Twitter. And you can see that there's supports there that were used uh, for that extruded hole there. And, and the holes for all four of the, uh, the speaker um, connectors. So on these four, what I did on my last print, I... I was able to push this material out very easily, not by scraping it from this way, but instead inserting the audio connector. So let me make sure I get the camera on this so I can explain this to the camera because that's really the purpose of this. So this is the decor wall plate and you can see that there's supports. You can see that there's supports on this side uh, that were used to, to keep this from sagging when it created this this part for the mounting. Um, so to get these supports out I'm going to insert the audio connectors. So I have to remove the, one of the audio connectors from from this plate and to do that I unscrew it from from the rear and I just need a either a wrench or needle nose pliers are sufficient. <coughs> These are the pliers that came with uh, the Prusa printer. Just need to loosen that up enough. Now there's, I just need to rotate this to get this nut off. It's coming off fine. 
Alright, so this is the speaker connector. You can see that. And now I'm going to insert the speaker connector. You know, and, and what I'm amazed at is the measurement. Like I measured this with calipers, and I'm I'm going to demonstrate uh, the measurement process and the calipers, how I came up with everything. But it just fits with little, very little force. So what I'm doing now is I'm forcing this through. And I can hear it breaking. Let me do the next one. Yep, see, you can see it just popped. The supports just popped right out. I'll do these to the others and then come back to that one. There we go, two of the supports are out now. Just need to work on this last one. Here we go, so the supports are out. So now connecting, connecting this terminal, all I need now is the nut. So you can see I measured, I don't know if focus is in good enough here. So the nut, I even measured the thickness of the plate to ensure I had enough threads for the nut to connect to. So now I have to get past two sets of threads. So this is the first set of threads that I'm getting past. And I have to make sure I don't cross thread when I go through the second set of threads. And the second set of threads is what actually secures it to the back. And I want to use my pliers without destroying the threads. To secure this. Alright, so that's on there. And I put the connector. Now this this type of connector, you can use the wires through the back, through the hole there. Or you can use a banana plug. I'll just leave them a little loose. Okay, now I need a positive connector. I'm going to put it in here. There we go. So I'm removing a positive connector from this. So I don't know how much these connectors are by themselves. This plate I think was, I don't know, I bought this 10 years ago when we were in our other house. I designed a whole home theater in our older house. Uh, so I don't think this would have been too expensive, probably in the order of 10 or 15 dollars. So I don't know how much it would be just for the connectors themselves, but the idea was that I wanted it right away because I want to be able to mount the TV uh, to our wall because I'm painting the TV in our family room. Alright, so this connector is a little tight so we'll just screw it on. And now I'll put the nut on to secure the connector to the decor plate. Okay, 
There we go, we got it secured. Now I just want to tighten that nut down. Okay, we're tight. Okay, now I can put the rear connector on that secures the wires. That's the clamp. So now I need two more connectors and then I'll finish that connector. So I need a positive and a negative, so I'll just take these off right now. Now this, when I create the video, I'm not going to show this full speed. This will this will be something that will be uh, time lapsed. Because otherwise it would be boring content to just sit here and watch me, like what's happening in the live stream. But like I said, this is behind the scenes. This is what goes into creating content. So there's a lot of this stuff that goes on. So I live streamed the creating of the part last night. And that worked out really well. Uh, not the live stream part, but the creating of the part. Um, that was really really excited to see that after I printed it because I you're not sure until you, you print it if maybe you made a mistake on something and everything seemed to work out just fine I installed it so I have the top connector that's going to go behind the TV installed right now All right, so this is the negative terminal Connecting this to the plate. So I'm just connecting the nut again. Make sure the camera has a good angle. in the nut. So I have to put a second coat of paint on the living room. After that, we can hang the TV. The paint dries very quickly. And it's a very dry weather right now. Put that on the wrong way. Goes on this way. So again, I'm just securing this nut. That helps keep this locked in. Sometimes I have mental blocks. Alright, so I talked about this. I talked about making and 3D printing. What did I want to talk about? Oh, I want to talk about the measurement. So, I so have the, the original decor plate here. I need my calipers. Because I was going over this last night in the live stream, but the problem with that was the camera angle and trying to show this. I don't have the awesome setup that um, Glenn and Xander have where they have 20 different cameras. 
So, important measurements. The full height of this was entered as one parameter. So this was 107.8. Then the width of this, 38. But by the way, when you take a measurement, you have uncertainty in the device. You have uncertainty in temperature, humidity, uh, the way you measure it, your angle. There's so many different factors that go into the uncertainty of making a measurement. I'm going to do a video on this, but one of the things um, that help doesn't eliminate uncertainty, but it helps reduce it and can actually help quantify it with some statistical measurements is to take three measurements. Now, ideally you would take ten, but that's really time consuming. Uh, once you get beyond three, you start um, entering the area of diminishing returns. Ten is a really solid number if it's really important. Anything beyond that, you're definitely getting diminishing returns. Because when I measure this, so I want to, every time you use calipers, you want to zero. Take it back to zero, zero it out, remeasure, take your measurement. If it's an important measurement, something like this isn't critical. So I'm getting 37.98. Now my past measurement was 38. So now I'll reset again. It's already zeroed out. I'll take the measurement again. But right now you see I got 38. So I would take those, if, if it's something I'm really concerned about, I would take those three measurements that I made and average them together. Well, it would come out to like 30, 38, 37.99 I think would be the the average of those three which at that point you might as well just round it up to 38 which at that point you might as well just round it up to 38 so then the other important measurements was this here this is the area that protrudes through the decora cover plate so I got a measurement of 66 there. I recorded that in my um, dimensions inside uh, Fusion 360. I got a, a width of 32.8, which is almost like 33, but I, I rounded it to, I think, 32.9. So that's, that's what protrudes through. But then there was this, there's this little... Um, fill it here this rounded corner so I tried my hardest to get a measurement on that by eyeing up where I thought the radius started and I got a measurement of two so that's two millimeters for, and and when I designed the part and put all that in there it worked out perfectly it fits the decor cover plate so the other measurement I needed to be concerned with was the thickness of this right for rigidity so this is like 3.3 somewhere around there that's the value that I entered so the thickness of the plate itself then the other part was where the nut connects on to the back of the audio connector for the banana plug I needed to make sure I had enough thread so I had to measure that height there and that was the thickness of this inner part here but this inner part I actually had protrude through so it was flush with the cover plate and you can see that's that's this here and so that's this thickness of this part here I made sure I had enough clearance for the uh, the threads for the new right, you know one thing I forgot to do was clap so I can sync this up later so that way we get that spike in the audio so I can synchronize it, even though it's uh, at the end. So this connector I'm going to use on the bottom where I have outlets and